Hey guys, welcome to Mrs. G's Sewing Space. I'm glad you're able to join me today. For this video, I was doing some bags. I made a copy of a bag that I got as a gift from someone. And I was going to show you, or I am, that was, I'm going to show you how to make it. However, in my video, I'm showing you how to make a bag made out of camo fabric. I don't have the finished bag. You can see it at the end of the video, but I don't have it any longer, so I can't show it to you right now because we gave it away as a gift. So this is actually going to be in another video, but the basic construction is the same for the camo bag, and that's what we're going to be learning about today. Before I get started with the cutting of the fabric, I'm going to show you how I do my measurements. When I start drawing out my measurements on the fabric I have over there, I start with the baseline. It's either going to be the bottom or the side, and I mark all my measurements off of that. So this piece of paper is going to be my fabric, and this is how I'm going to do this. So I'm just going to mark a straight line. So it doesn't matter if you have wavy edges, if your fabric's crooked or anything like that. This line is going to be straight. So all my markings and measurements are going to be straight based on that line, not the edges of the fabric. Okay, so here's my line. Now everything else comes off of this line. So, and I'm going to put it over here. So my bag that I measured is 13 and a half inches wide. Plus I'm going to add a seam allowance. So I'm just going to do a quarter inch seam allowance and I'm just going to roll it between a quarter and an inch and a half inch. So I'm just going to roll it to hold numbers and give 14 inches. So 14 inches wide and then I'm going to do 16.5 inches tall plus a seam allowance plus I'm going to multiply that by two because what I'm going to do I'm going to I'm not going to draw just one side of the bag I'm going to draw out so that there's no seam on the bottom of it so it'll go all the way down you'll see in a minute you'll see what I mean in a minute but I'm going to double that because it's going to go from the top to the bottom from the bottom to the top all in one piece so 16.5 is what, 32, 33, plus a seam allowance, so I'm going to see, 33, I'm going to roll that to 34, so it'll be 34 inches. So 16 plus 16 is 32, plus an inch is 34, plus a seam allowance, I'm just rolling that into a whole number, so that's 34 inches. Then the corners are 3 inches. And I don't have to worry about measuring those just yet, so that's no cutting or anything like that, so I'm not worried about that. Now, I'm, I've got two variations of the straps that I'm going to do, but if we were doing straps that were the same material as the fabric that we're cutting out, then that would be, it would be 26 inches long, and you don't have to worry about a seam allowance or anything for that, but then it's going to be one inch and a quarter wide times two plus the seam allowance. It would be two and a half inches plus the seam allowance and I'm just going to roll that over to the nearest which would be three inches. So our strap would be three inches wide and 26 inches long and then we're going to have our fabric cut so it's 3.5 so it's 14 inches wide and then 34 inches long and then our straps. Okay so based here we're going to do, we're going to start at that point and we're going to measure down 34 inches for the body of the bag. And this is just pretend I'm not actually measuring that. So I'm going to say like right about here. Okay. So we're going to say this right here is 34 inches. And this is the body of the bag. And then from this point, from this corner right here, we're going to measure out our width, which is uh, 14 inches wide. So we're going to say right about here. Okay, so we're going to say this is 14 inches wide. And then from there, we're just going to measure up. Okay, so there's our body of our bag, 34 by 14. Now our straps, we're going to do 3 inches wide and 26 inches long. So you're going to measure out 3 inches. So we're going to say, we'll do, we'll do these little squares as inches. Oh, that's too small. 
So three inches wide for one strap, another one for another strap. So you need two straps, one for each bag. They're three inches wide and then 26 inches long. So it's, it's gonna be like about right here, right around here. And so, and so there you go. So you have your two straps and the body of the bag and you go cut all that out and I'll catch up with you when it's time to assemble the bag. Right now I'm gonna go dry out the pattern on my fabric. So this is the fabric. It's a regular O cotton canvas. I picked this up at Joann's and these are my straps and this is my body of the bag. Um, I'm going to go iron all this so that it's all nice and flat and not wrinkly. I cut it out late at night. I'm like, I really didn't want to deal with ironing, but I'm gonna go iron this now. It's all gonna be nice and flat, and then I'll come back and we'll start putting things together. And then this is some fabric that I had, uh, my husband bought for me from Singapore, and they are rice balls with uh, faces and attitudes, and then just regular old uh, camo fabric. This is a thicker fabric. It's about the same, Mm, it's about the same thickness as the natural canvas. It's a little softer though, and this one's extremely soft. But anyways, so what I did is I went ahead and did the straps for the camo bag and for the sushi bag, which is what I have here. So I need to flip those inside out right here. So here you see me using a big safety pin. I'm pinning it through one layer of fabric and then I'm going to push it through the casing in between the layers of fabric to be able to flip my tube inside out. So I push the safety pin through and I pull the fabric over the safety pin, turning the tube inside out. Okay, for this strap, the seam is here on the edge, so I rolled the fabric in between my fingers so it would lay here and then I ironed it flat. So when I go to sew, I'm gonna sew two lines. I'm gonna sew one line here, which will sew down the seam allowance to the inside, and then I'll sew a line here on this side. So there'll be two lines of stitching all the way down, keeping everything nice and tight together. Okay, there's a couple of ways we can do this. I don't have the bag that I copied this from because my daughter took it to school, so mm, I'm gonna think about this. There are two ways that, oh no, two ways. We can, there are two ways that we can do this. I can either figure out where I wanna place my straps here, fold that end under, I would fold that end under, and then sew, like right here and do that for both straps. And then I would do it for the other side and then finish putting the bag together. Or, so this would be the top of my bag. I would fold this over. That would enclose the top of this seam because it's a raw edge. And then I would fold this down like this and I would end up sewing across the top of the bag. But my handle would be tucked into the inside. So when I so across here, the handle's tucked in, but then I would bring it over so my handle's like this, and then I would do more stitching right here, securing the handle to the top of the bag. So then it eventually looks like this, but it's extra secure because I have my bag handle rolled into this hem right here, or to this casing here at the top, and it gives it extra strength. I'm going to place my handle here. I'm gonna fold the end up into the inside, just like this. Where am I? So this is about an inch, let's see. So an inch, I'm gonna fold it up an inch. I'm gonna clip it in place so that it won't move. Fold this one up an inch. Clip that in place. And then let's see, where do, how, how do I want to do this? Do I want it super close? Normally on patterns you would have this all pre-marked, but we're doing this on the fly. I'm not taking any real measurements. I'm not doing any real pattern drafting here. I'm just trying to figure it out as I go along. So there's my bag. Pull this down a little bit. And I think I'm going to, let's see. 
uh, three and a half inches that way, three and a half inches that way, and we will about right there. So about seven inches from the bottom. So three inches from here, seven inches from here. And I'm going to pin this in place. And when I sew it, I'm only going to sew about three inches. So from the bottom, so about right here. Okay. All right. I think I'm done. Finally, got both sides done. I'm like, for me telling you guys, you don't have to worry about being precise. Man, I was being awfully precise, wasn't I? Okay. So now I'm going to take this to my sewing machine and I'm gonna sew a rectangle here, probably twice. If I want extra security, I would sew an X in here as well. And I do that for all four sides. So I'm gonna do that real quick and I'll be right back. All right, so now we got our handles on, we're gonna sew the back together. So we're gonna do right sides together. We're gonna tuck our handles in here together. We're gonna to clip them together so they don't get in the way. Where's mine? But right sides together, and we're just gonna sew up the edges. Straight up the edges. When we get done with that, we'll do the top, and then we'll do the corners. So now I've got my edges sewn up, and let me show you what I did here. When I cut my fabric out, I cut it out so I have the selvages on one side. And because I have these selvages here, that means I don't have to do any type of uh, surging or zigzag or anything because this will never fray. So we're good here. I just stitched this line of sewing and we're good. However, here on the other side, because this is a cut raw edge, it will fray. So I went back after I sewed it on my machine, my sewing machine, I went back and surged the ends. So now this will not fray. And if you don't have a serger, all you have to do is a zigzag stitch or on your sewing machine is an overcast stitch. Just look at your manual and it'll tell you which one you use and you can use that instead. So I'm gonna open this here. Well, side seam. I'm gonna open the side seam here on this side. And I'm gonna fold it over like once or twice. Uh, probably about, we're gonna do like an inch. So I'm gonna fold it over a half inch and then a half inch. So that way we're enclosing the raw edge in the fold. I'm gonna pin it in place or clip it in place in this case. I'm gonna do it all the way around. And for this side, because this isn't split, I'll just fold it to one side and once again, fold and fold. So fold it once, about half an inch, fold it twice, about half an inch, and clip. I will tell you for beginners that you'll eventually get the hang of eyeballing what a half an inch is, but I also use my thumb. So from the bottom of my thumbnail to the tip of my thumb is about a half inch anyways. So I just use that to measure as I go along when I am measuring stuff like that. We're almost done. Now all we have to do is our corners. So I'm gonna take that off. We don't need that anymore, but I'm gonna keep those tucked in. So our corners now, we're going to open them up. So let's, let's do a little finger press right here so it can mark the fabric. And then we're gonna open it up and we're gonna match side to side. This line, the finger press line here and our seam line, we're gonna align right on top of each other. Well, this stuff does not slide against itself. All right. Okay, once you have your corner, I'm gonna measure three inches from edge to edge. Whoop, like right there. So right here, I'm gonna sew. And I'm gonna put a pin here first. So just to keep everything in place. And where's my marker? Let's see. Okay, 
in. And then we're gonna do this side. Wait, let's. Okay. So now I'm going to take these two corners right here and I'm going to put them under my machine and I'm going to stitch right on that line. I'm going to stitch on that line. Why does this one look bigger? Is that the same? No, it's the same. Okay, I just need to make sure it's the same size. It'll just look funky. Okay, sew those up and I'll be right back. Okay, here we go. Take that out, take that out. Now, you can do a couple of things here. If you want, you can just cut that off and serge it and then you don't have this little flap here which i'm not all that worried about i'm not concerned about it it'll be tucked into the inside anyways we're gonna have stuff on it when you use your bag so i don't i don't care but if you want to take care of it just trim them off leave a seam leave, uh, leave a seam allowance so you can then serge it and and keep it from fraying all right here you go so we're going to pop out our corners pop out our corners Wow, this seems like really narrow, and even though I added. All right, and there you go. And there's our first bag. And this is just a simple little little bag to take to, I don't know, to church, to the grocery store. Oh, 13 and a half inches. It ended up being 13 and a half inches like my original measurements. So it's not that small after all. And let's see, it'd probably be a little longer. Nope, 16 and a half. What were my measurements? Oh, well, there you go. 13 and a half across, 16 and a half from top to bottom. So I hope you liked the video. I hope you were able to learn a couple of things about how to put a simple, just simple canvas bag together. It doesn't have to be crazy and a simple sewing machine will work. You don't have to have a serger. As long as your sewing machine has a zigzag stitch, you can do the serging, so it's no big deal. And I hope you guys found this enjoyable and helpful. If you have any questions, throw them down in the comments below, and I'll respond as soon as I can. And I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.